So imagine in the future, I have a channel and people from all over the world can watch it through something called the internet. <laughs> See, that's brilliant, man. I'm getting the tape recorded. What's up, guys? It's Kaze here. So That 70s Show is another one of my favorite shows, and it's another one that I usually watch from start to finish while I'm doing mundane tasks. So when I saw that in their first season, they had The Rock guest starring, I only had one question to ask myself. What do you want to talk about? Now, The Rock has been in a ton of movies. He's produced a ton of shows and movies. And at some point, he was even regarded as the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Now, he hasn't always had such an illustrious career in Hollywood. In fact, he's had a few misses in his career, especially early on. You remember Disney Rock? You know, like Race to Witch Mountain Rock? Tooth Fairy Rock? Game Plan Rock? Actually, no, nah, I'm not even going to hold you. Game Plan was one of my favorite movies growing up. But my point is, The Rock has had some humble beginnings in his acting career. And there's a common misconception that The Rock's acting debut was in The Mummy Returns in 2001. But... Psych! That's the wrong number! This episode came out in 1999, so he actually was in this first. So ha, Brian, from work. Also, this episode has two cameos that completely blew my mind. Anyway, if you're new and you enjoy, please like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into it. Hoo! So it starts off with the boys in the basement, and they're all finding out that Kelso did it with Jackie. And if you don't know what it is, well, when two people love each other and the Cubs just win the World Series, I think they get it. I think they get it. So the girls join them and they start surfing through the channels until they see a commercial promoting that Rocky Johnson is coming to Kenosha Wrestling. Watch Rocky Johnson take on 20 snarling men. Little people. But he didn't say little people. And everybody gets hyped. Oh man, we gotta go. And I actually find it pretty cool that Rocky Johnson was the wrestling star of the 70s. And in order to portray him, they got his son who was the wrestling star of the 90s, which is when this was filmed. He's still even a major wrestling star to this day. Now go home and smoke some more crack. Eric gets called upstairs by Red, and he does that thing we've all done at least three times in our lives. He says, okay, I'll be right up, but doesn't get up. Eric eventually goes upstairs, and it's Red, Kitty, and Lori in the kitchen. Red starts grilling Eric about some library books he doesn't return, and Eric doesn't see the big deal, says it's just a few bucks. Kind of bold for someone not working at the time, but okay. So while all Eric's friends are downstairs enjoying the wrestling show, Red tells Eric to go return the books right then and there. And this is the episode where Eric tells Red no. Okay. No. Now my views on Eric and Red's relationship is a bit up and down, much like the relationship itself. On one hand, I do see Red's desire to make Eric a more responsible young man, but at the same time, I do feel like he doesn't let Eric really be himself. And I'm pretty sure this is intentional. This is usually a common struggle between father and son relationships, where the father usually wants the son to be like him just because it's easier to coach that. However, the son will usually grow up and have his own thoughts and opinions, and that usually leads to conflicting opinions. Me, for instance, I don't have any kids, but I do have little Kaze. He kind of just does what he wants. Oh, oh, he's doing a dance. Oh. So Kitty threatens Red with excessive talking if he doesn't make an effort to be friends with Eric. It cuts to the next day and Donna's also having trouble with her parents. Her mom wants to be more than a housewife, but her dad's just being Bob. You fill out that sweater real nice. The foremans are all eating dinner and the food looks incredible. And a lot of times it does on that 70s show. Bake off. So Eric tells the family about the wrestling show coming to Kenosha. That's when Kitty decides to inform the family that Red actually used to wrestle in high school. Now Red calls what he did in high school real and what they're doing is all in that. Now this is actually a pretty interesting detail. A lot of people believe that when Vince McMahon revealed that wrestling was scripted, that's when everybody found out. However, a lot of people knew it was scripted. That was just the first time it was ever announced to the world. And it's very fitting that Red was the one to point that out. He definitely portrays the type of person that would have called wrestling all out fake back then. Whereas Eric and his friends don't care, they just want to see it for entertainment. Kitty threatens them both with more talking, so they both agree to go to the show together. Midge is off the therapy, and that leaves Bob home alone by himself. He then guilts Red into taking him along to the wrestling show. By the way, her therapist looks pretty sketchy. 
The gang all get to the show and Rocky Johnson comes out and just as promoted, he's going against the 20 little people and Red's not too impressed until he sees one of them dropped on their heads. And I'm not sure what that says about Red or wrestling fans, so I'm gonna continue. So after Rocky Johnson's match, two unnamed wrestlers are having a match in the ring. And I noticed these guys are doing actual pro wrestling moves like shoulder tackles, hip tosses, and a drop kick. And my initial thought is, okay, maybe The Rock brought some developmental wrestlers so they can get some more time in the ring and some time on television. And that's in fact what he did do. However, as I looked closer, I realized this is Matt and Jeff Hardy. Now, I completely marked out on this. I'm a lifelong Hardy fan, and I've seen this episode a couple times, and I just never noticed that was them. Matt Hardy's even got his infamous chin strap here. They were wearing these awful 70s wigs and Jeff didn't have any tattoos, so they were completely unrecognizable. So I guess this is also their acting debut as well, if you want to count this. They're actors. Hyde and Fez's arc the entire episode is they're trying to get beer. Let's see how that's going for them. You're not going to get me that beer, are you? Boy, if you don't get- It cuts back to the ring and there's another match going on and a wrestler gets thrown outside the ring. Eric and Red begin taunting him and he gets up and uh, it turns out it's Ken Shamrock. So he gets all in their face and makes them sit back down. Then Red whispers to Eric he's having a great time. Now the Ken Shamrock appearance was kinda in your face and even promoted. Tonight's episode of That 70s Show. He's hanging out with all his buddies. So that one I kinda saw coming and did remember. However, in research for this video, I found some behind the scenes footage of him and The Rock on set just having fun with the cast members. It seemed like a pretty chill time. Just kidding. The Rock and Ken Shamrock actually really respected each other and Ken Shamrock still says that The Rock was his favorite opponent. The Rock also inducted Ken Shamrock into the Impact Hall of Fame. And yeah, The Rock was definitely one of his best opponents. They've had some classic matches. So Eric and Red wait in line for some autographs from Rocky Johnson, and Rocky completely blows them off and almost punches a guy. Red then decides he and Eric are going to sneak in, which they do successfully, and they're almost immediately interrupted by Rocky Johnson and his manager. Red then reminds everybody that he's the only person in the room that's taken a life. And uh, yeah, fair point, fair point. Rocky ends up folding and signs an autograph. He also says he has a son that's going to grow up to be the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. Jury's still out on that one. Ah, I'm kidding. Eric and Red get back to the house and they're joking and palling around. It even ends with a hug. And much like how I feel about Eric and Kyle, I really wish these two had more sincere interactions with each other. But unlike Eric and Kyle, I do feel like these guys have way more sincere moments together. Also, their relationship isn't based on love-hate. It's more so based on respect for authority or lack thereof. By the way, that therapist wasn't a therapist. He was just some guy that threw adult parties, if you know what I mean. All in all, this was a pretty good episode though. I find it pretty relatable because going to wrestling shows is how I bond with my dad. The running theme throughout the episode was dads in a sense. You got Donna's dad having issues with her mom. You got Eric having issues with his dad. And you got The Rock playing his dad. The importance of this episode to the series it's kind of significant. This is the first time Donna's parents started to have issues, and this led to their divorce later in the series. This is also the point where Jackie realizes she has the power in the relationship and really starts to boss Kelso around, which led to him eventually cheating on her, which led to her being with Hyde. And this is also the first episode where Eric stands up to Red, which leads to a series-long arc of him becoming more mature and responsible. Kinda. So, a lot of groundwork was laid down. As far as insight on the wrestling industry, there wasn't too much here, but they also went more in depth than I thought they would and they really didn't have to, so I always appreciate that. Maybe having The Rock, one of the biggest superstars in WWF at the time, there kinda influenced the episode, but I doubt it. He was way too new to acting to be able to call shots. But also, the portrayal of wrestling and the can't blink and you miss it cameos alone made this episode worth it for me. Real quick, I gotta thank you guys for all the love and support that you've been giving me and the channel. I've got a lot more videos. Please comment down below any ones that you would want me to do. I'm still waiting for WWE to drop the behind the curtain for WrestleMania 40. I really want to cover that and talk about it with you guys, especially since I've been covering that whole storyline since January. Check it out, by the way. But yeah, hopefully it's out by the release of this video. If not, I've got another video in store for you guys anyway. 
again if you like the video please like the video and if you want to see more subscribe put your seatbelt back on and until next time keep it cosmic